Hello, hello, and welcome to the State of the Fandom or the Furry Presidential Podcast. I'm not sure which uh, I'm not sure which um, title to use. What do you think? Let's just use the State of the Fandom. State of the Fandom. All right. Welcome back to the State of the Fandom. I am your president for life, democratically elected, of course. And my name is Neil Fox. And with me, as always, is my partner, my husband of the future. Hello, I am Link Labrador. Hello, Link Labrador. Uh, you can see that he is driving at the moment, so we may have to focus on that a little bit from time to time, but we will do our best to make the podcast interesting. Uh, so, Link Labrador. Yes. What topic would you like to discuss in the podcast today? Oh. We've been discussing a lot of really interesting stuff, like, uh, how to make politicians look like fools. Uh, that's a really interesting topic, and we will discuss it quite frequently. Yes. Um, we've also been discussing Kira the Wolf. Uh, we get a lot of clicks on our videos when we talk about Kira the Wolf, so that might be a good one. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Majira Strawberry, and uh, that is one that we could talk about probably for another 10 hours at least. What would you like to talk about? Well, let's start with the easier of the topics today. Okay. And that would be Kira the Wolf. Because... Kira the Wolf, indeed. So, uh, here's what I'm thinking, okay? Yeah. Let's talk about some of the things that are part of the story for Kira the Wolf, okay? Part of Kira the Wolf's story that have not been covered extensively by other YouTubers, okay? Fair enough. So, uh, Cecil McFly is probably the highest profile YouTuber who has talked about him. Um, she has, I think, around 500,000 subscribers, something like that. Um, but ironically enough, he has not been covered by some of the more famous YouTubers who do news, like, um, say, Philip DeFranco, for example. Oh. I am really surprised that Philip DeFranco has not covered the fact that a YouTuber is allegedly, and I have to use the word allegedly because he has not yet been convicted, but he has allegedly committed acts of rape, zoophilia, necrophilia, and zoo sadism. Yes. Now, uh, we've explained zoo sadism on a previous podcast, but it was several months ago at this point. So let's go over that topic again, because it is important to understand what that term means. So, zoo sadism. Zoo, uh, meaning relating to animals. Sadism, meaning the pain and suffering of the animal gives the person sexual pleasure. It is horrible. It is disgusting. It is despicable. I I struggle to even think of a thing that would be worse. Like, like yes, there are many things that are terrible in this world, but torturing animals to get your rocks off is pretty much, in my opinion, as bad of an action as someone can do. Agreed. So, Let's talk about some of the things that many people may not know about what happened with Kira the Wolf, including Cecil McFly herself, who has done extensive research, okay? And, uh, oh, there's, there's several Kiwi Farm threads about this. Do you know what Kiwi Farms is? Of course I know what Kiwi Farms is. Okay, well, yeah, for, for the audience... For audience members who may not know, what is Kiwi Farms? For the audience members who don't know what Kiwi Farms is, it is... A place that you can speak about the darker parts of any celebrity, basically. Right. So there are a lot of places on the internet, YouTube included, uh, where talking about someone's personal life is either completely against terms of service, like on TikTok, or just highly frowned upon, like on YouTube. Uh huh. So, I will not be disclosing Mr. Kira the Wolf's personal information, other than things that have been talked about in the public light. So I will not, to my knowledge, I will not be disclosing anything illegal or anything personal about him that has not already been disclosed publicly. Okay? Now, I do have some information about him that the public does not know before I post this video. Because I worked with the fucking guy for years as his merch manager at Artwork Tea. I 
know a lot about this person. I exchanged many messages with Kiro. His name is Joshua Hoffman. Now, Joshua Hoffman is not a name that is a secret. It has been posted many, many places. This is not posting someone's private information, YouTube. Uh, I am not disclosing private information. I am simply reporting on a topic that has been widely reported upon in other places. So, Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Uh, hey. You? Hi, Kiro. Uh, so, I have a question. Why are you, to this very day, to this very day, still using artwork that we commissioned for you at Artwork Tea and we paid for after we had to ban you from the site over four years ago. Are you so uncreative, Kiro, that you can't come up with a new shirt design in four years? That's, uh, that's not exactly a uh, good look for you, man. You're still using the designs that we made for you on your behalf. And then we had to ban you because you fucked your dog to death. And then you kept using our work. Good job, Kiro. Good job. Good thinking, Kiro. Good so boy. smart. Uh, that's just one of many things that the public may not know. So, in terms of the shirts, okay? Yeah. Uh, he has used the shirts that we made for him at Artwork Tea. Um, I'll have to pull up some examples for the for the um, podcast or YouTube audience, but um, basically any of the shirts that have his character on them that he uses in videos all the time, yeah, we made those for him. I sent them to him as free samples because I wanted him to be able to sell on the site before all the fucking leaks came out. He was one of the highest sellers on Artwork Tea. He was so popular that he made quite a lot of sales on our website. People loved this guy. It is one of the reasons why he still has, to this day, hundreds of supporters online. Hundreds of people who say, I think, I think it was all a hoax. I think it was all faked. He is innocent. He did nothing wrong. Uh, to those people, I say, do you have eyes? Do you have ears? Do you have functioning brains? Because there is video. Video of Joshua Hoffman, or Kiro the Wolf, raping his dog to death. I can't put it any more clearly. There is video. And not only that, but it is obviously him. Obviously. People are like, oh, you can't prove it's him. Uh, I knew this guy, okay? I knew him in person. I knew him online. It's him. Like, I, I, I am not a stupid individual. I, if I look at a person and I say, oh, that's how that person would act. That's how that person would think. That's how that person would talk. That's how that person would walk. That's that person's tattoo that's on their thigh that very few people even know exists. Oh, you're telling me that someone painted your tattoo on their thigh, Kiro? To frame you? And, oh, and they found an actor that has exactly your same body type. Oh, and their fingers look exactly like yours. They're, they're fingers. You're telling me someone manicured their hands to look exactly like you to frame you? Sure. Sure. <laughs> no, that is not what fucking happened. Uh, Kiro, you raped Coda to death, and I am not going to let you... I'm not going to let you get away with it. That, I have a conscience, Kiro, unlike you, unlike your fucking rapist friends. I have a conscience, and I will not stand for this. I trusted you, Kiro. I trusted you. I put my trust in you so much that I made you a bunch of money. I made you those designs that you're still using, Kiro. 
You fucking asshole. Uh, now, Kiro, I, I, I have a recommendation for you. Uh, here's what you should do. You should leave the internet permanently, or you should debate me. Because it's one or the other, Kiro. Either you just disappear, and no one ever hears from you again, and, and you can live a long and happy life. And if you do, it would be very difficult for me to debate you. It would be very difficult for me to prove that you are guilty, because, just like you did before, if you say nothing, it's very difficult for someone to argue against you. But... Very true. Uh, Kiro, you came back to YouTube, and you claimed that you are innocent. That is a claim that I can prove is false. And no, Kiro, you are not allowed to continue your rape, your abuse, your mutilation of dead bodies. Jesus fucking Christ, you are not allowed to do that. You did those things, Kiro. You posted a picture to your friend, Snake Thing, who is in prison for 25 years. You posted a picture of a dead fox that you raped, Kiro. That's called necrozoophilia. Well, I have a question, Kiro. Would you prefer we go to Snake Thing and see if he's willing to talk to us? That's an excellent point. Uh, <laughs> hey, Kiro, I have a question. Uh, so Snake Thing is serving a 25-year prison sentence, so we have what, 20 years or so, since he's been in prison for a couple of years now, we have 20 years to go and find him and talk to him. Kiro, do you think that Snake Thing might be willing to expose what you did? Since he is rotting in jail and you are not? I, th I think he might be willing to do that. Yeah, let's go find some of your old friends, Kiro. They'd be willing to, they might be willing to help us. Uh, they might even be willing to talk to talk some sense into you as well. I would love, oh my god, can you imagine how interesting that podcast would be if we got Snake Thing on the, on the phone from prison, and we got Kiro on the phone on Discord, and we had a conversation. Oh my god. That Let's would be it. an exceptionally interesting podcast. Because you would have Snake Thing saying things like, oh yeah, yeah, Kiro did this. Like, that. this was his main account. Uh, by the way, Kiro, I confirmed repeatedly that some of the messages from the deleted account, I confirmed that those messages were from your main account that you communicated with me. So, so you're telling me. So, let, me let me see if I get this straight, Kiro. So you're telling me and the public that you were framed so well that someone could write a book worth of text in your own voice, could fake pictures that only you could create, and could somehow hack into your phone and copy your Telegram account to the point that forwarded messages that you wrote from your main account look like they were from your main account, but they actually weren't. They were actually from a different account. Sure, Kiro. Sure. Right. That's totally what happened. And not that, that sounds... you are a fucking rapist. That sounds logical. Sure. Yeah, Kiro, you were framed. Sure. Buddy, Kiro. I'm sorry, mate. And the evidence stacks up against you in an overwhelming typhoon. And those willing to believe you without taking any, any common sense into account. Well, quite frankly, I see why you have so many underage moronic friends. Yeah. And fans. Unsurprisingly, many of his fans were born after the year 2000. Okay? Like, these are young fans. Do, do you think that fans that are, like, fucking 14... Do you think that these 14-year-old fans are going to go dig through a Kiwi Farms thread and find all this shit? No. No, they're just going to go, no, of course, my favorite YouTuber would never do that. Uh, we've seen this before. 
We've seen this before. We have. Do I need to remind you of the dozens of cases in which this has happened in this exact sequence of steps? Oh, I was framed. I was framed. It was all a conspiracy against me. And then your legion of idiot fans comes to defend you. Oh, yes, of course. Kiro could never do anything wrong. Or, you know, uh, what, what's another example? Oh, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey could never do anything wrong. Oh, my priest could never do that. My priest would never molest a child. He's so nice. He's so kind to me, his parishioner. Why would he rape my son? That must be a lot. Yeah, no, Kiro... Uh, wake the fuck up, okay? You cannot get away with this ever again. If you are abusing animals right now, so fucking help me, I will get you fucking thrown in prison. Unsurprisingly, he has not posted about having any new pets. Unsurprisingly, he has not made hardly any public statements that were easily verifiable or unverifiable. He has just made many public comments in the past year or two. Uh, would you like to know what some of those comments are? Yes, I would. Oh, apparently the hate comments fuel him. He likes to see them. Great. Kiro, you know what? You're about to get about 100,000 more of these comments, so I hope you enjoy them. Because you won't just be getting criticism from furries, you will be getting criticism from the public. Uh, my love, my, my wonderful, my wonderful partner in life, I have a question. Yes. Do general people, or sorry, do, does the general public, the, the news watching public, does the average viewer of news, or listener to news, if it's the radio, does the average news consumer care whether or not puppies are raped to death? The average do care. Uh-huh. Does the average furry care about Kiro anymore? Uh, the answer is no, according to about a hundred people in my Twitter comments right now. Well, oh, you're bringing up old drama. There's nothing else to be said about this story. <laughs> you are fucking just, wrong. The story's just getting started. Yeah. So, so, oh, furries, I, I have something to say to you. Not to Kiro. To you, furries. Here is what I want to say. Uh, there's nothing else to bring up? Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I worked with Kiro. And I have not told my entire story because I hoped that I had done enough by canceling him from my website by making many statements, both in private and in public, that Kiro was a disgusting, horrible human being and deserved every bit of justice that is coming to him. And I hoped that the police of Pittsburgh would do the right thing and would put him in fucking prison. But unfortunately, uh, darling, do you know what happened? Kiro's parents would not cooperate with the investigation. His parents would not cooperate with putting their son in jail, and therefore they had to drop the case for one reason and one reason only. Lack of evidence? Lack of evidence. So I say, here, here's what I say, why don't we why don't we, you and I, why don't we provide so much evidence, so much public outcry, so much evidence that they can't deny it? What if we just rolled up to the police station and said, here, I'm a private... I am, I am a, an investigative journalist. I am an investigative journalist. Yeah. And here is a thumb drive with more evidence on it. And this evidence is shocking and appalling. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And it's just a full breakdown of literally everything that you could possibly download. Yes. Uncensored. And you just hand it to them. 
completely uncensored. So here is why we are not going to do that. Okay? Now, we are going to do something similar, but we are not going to do that specific strategy, and here's why. Darling, if we did that with the Indianapolis Police Department, based on our own experience with them, would they do anything? Okay, I'm skipping scenes. Scenes? Yes. Okay, what do you I'm mean? I'm skipping a series of steps. Okay. Get the public outcry first. Yep. Get into the newspapers. Absolutely. Get other in get other journalists investigating the evidence first. Yep. Then make the case very, very, very obvious. Okay? Yep. So we will provide them the, the police department and, you know, the homicide department and, you know, all of these different departments that would be involved. The fucking FBI, for example. Uh, we will provide them all of the evidence, but as part of that, we will provide them a very clear story. Agreed. So, for example, we will work together with journalists from around the world with furries from around the world who know Kiro, who knew Kiro. We will work together with them to create a document. This document will have all of the evidence laid out in chronological order. Uh-huh. About both Kiro and Majira and Pineapple Fox and Kiwi Fox and Simba and anyone else who deserves justice. Okay? We will lay it all out in chronological order, with sources, with video and audio interviews. Uh-huh. So, for example, we will not just provide a picture. We will provide a picture and then a link to a podcast where we talk about the person in the picture, and we talk to the person in the picture, if possible. And goddamn, if the police do not believe that is enough evidence, then they are buffoons and fools, which we know that to be true. But we cannot do more than that. No. If 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 we lay out if we lay out the evidence in such a clear and obvious and straightforward fashion, and we bring the public, and we bring the courts, and we bring the journalists to the police and say this is has to be fixed. And they do nothing. Here is our next step. Okay? Yeah. Here is what we do next. If they will do nothing. Now, this would not be something we would be doing today. This is not something we would be doing tomorrow. This might be a year from now or two years from now. But if they do nothing, we will protest outside of the Pittsburgh Police Department as long as it takes on public property where they cannot remove us under the Constitution. Darling, what does the Constitution say about people gathering? I think we have every goddamn right to do it. We have the right to assemble peacefully. Yes. Specifically, peacefully. I, if I'm not mistaken, that is in the law. So, if we are not causing a fucking disturbance, and we are not burning the place to the ground, which, goddamn people, are you fucking kidding me? Why would you set your own city on fire? The it, right... It's, very, it's a very simple solution, guys. God. Yeah, don't set it on fire. Yes! You say your name... Now, there's a facetious idea that we could employ. Okay, it's a joke. It's a joke. This is obviously just a joke. Okay. You don't burn down your own city. You don't even burn down your neighbor's city. You find something that you guys can come and come and hug about mm -hmm. in the happy joy joy world of this United States of America. Mm -hmm. And here's an idea. Yep. Stop setting shit on fire. It makes you look like a fucking dumbass. So here, let me. This is a very funny voice that you're doing, but let me let me do it in a bit more serious way, okay? Yes. So, why 
I'm, I'm going, I, I, this might sound like a joke, but I am actually trying to ask a serious question, so I want a serious answer, okay? Yeah. Why do people, during protests, set things on fire? I, I, set things on fire is kind of a, a broad term, so let me be more clear. Why do protests sometimes turn violent against the police or against the community? Anger, outrage. Sure. It usually starts with something small and usually escalates from there. Right. Typically. People take and so there there are two reasons primarily. And you've touched on some of them, right? Yeah. One reason is things getting out of hand. If somebody is really upset, go. Oh go! Uh, if someone is really upset about injustice, and then someone starts a fight, sometimes it gets out of hand. People act much differently in groups than they do by themselves. Yes. Much differently. Well, so it comes down to mob mentality at that point. Exactly. So, sometimes mob mentality makes people do really stupid shit. And I, I wish that were not true, but that's just fucking human nature. Happens with monkeys, happens with humans. Like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not complicated to figure out. But there is a much worse possibility, which is sometimes people take advantage of the chaos to do crimes. Uh-huh. So, for example, if there is a crowd of a thousand people you know, protesting whatever, it doesn't matter. It could be a left-wing protest, could be a right-wing protest, could be a fucking Martian protest. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that it's a bunch of people protesting something. Agreed. Uh, Martian protests! Marsh for the Martians! Mars for the Martians! Whatever. I, the point is, I'm taking the politics out of it. Because yes. if I say, oh, yes, a right-wing protest, a left-wing protest, the people are going to be like, oh, well, that's totally justified! Like, god Guys, damn it. Um, I'm writing... And murdering each other and okay. setting their police police precinct on fire is not justified. No. What could be? What you? What could be? Maybe justified would be like burning down a McDonald's, but again, <laughs> no, again. no, <laughs> no. We are not advocating for violence, and we are not advocating for murder, and we are not advocating for burning shit down. So, <laughs> yes. Hold on. Be careful, my dear. So, here is what I want to say on this topic, okay? Yeah. If anyone would like to use this in the future, uh, by the way, everything on my channel is in the public domain. So anyone is welcome to use this audio or video for whatever purpose that they choose, as long as it is a lawful purpose. Yep. Okay? So, you know, don't put it on some child pornography video, but other than that, you're fine to use it for whatever fuck you want. As long as it is a lawful purpose, you can use it for whatever you want. Uh, so, anyway... My point is, that is not the way to get things to be the way you want. So, here is an example, okay? I would like to see the Supreme Court, or the President, or the Congress, or whatever. I would like to see someone in power return the United States to a functioning democracy with abortion rights as a sacred part of the law. It is appalling that we would have struck down Roe v. Wade. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, no. This will not stand. So I would like to see that change. Now, I could, in principle, I would not do this because I do not believe in violence. Let's not make a really loud noise while we're recording, my love. Let me help you. Okay, you wanted a puppy treat. Okay. Let me start that part over. Because hearing that in the background is not good audio for the podcast. Okay. So how do you and I want to change this thing? I want to make abortion rights. And, and let's be clear. You can call it right to life, you can call it right to abortion, you can call it whatever the fuck you want. I think that it should be the woman's right to choose. Because giving birth is an exceptionally difficult, dangerous, 
medical procedure. Yes. And if you don't believe that people should have the right to choose whether or not they should have a medical procedure, uh, you are wrong. We don't force people to have surgeries. We do not force people to, uh, you know, have uh, doctor-assisted suicide. We do not force people to have medical procedures against their will. That is called Nazi Germany. Uh-huh. And, 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 and so you're telling me that we are going to force poor, mostly black women to have a difficult, expensive medical procedure against their will? Genius. I, i.e. giving birth in an American hospital oftentimes costs $10,000 or more. So you're, you're telling me that this woman who, maybe she works at a McDonald's, maybe she works at a fucking TGI Friday's for, you know, $2 a fucking hour. How the fuck is she ever supposed to pay for a $10,000 medical bill? Are you fucking stupid? So you are not enshrining right to life. You are enshrining right to punish poor people for being poor. Right to racism. Right to racism. That's what it should be called. This is what this law is. Right Racist. to racism. And, oh, by the way, under the law, you cannot make a law that is racist. So, anyway, we have to change this as a country, as a people. We will not be able to proceed forward into the future. Do, do you, darling, do you think that on the Starship Enterprise, every single fucking woman has to have a baby if she gets pregnant? No! No! God fucking damn it, are you fucking stupid? I want to make the Federation real, as close to real as we can possibly make it, and this will not help that if we have... Every woman in America has to go through the entire process of giving birth to a baby every time she accidentally breaks a condom. That is not just. That is not realistic. That is not right. Well, here's what they're going to do next. Okay. They're just going to make condoms illegal so you don't have to worry about breaking a condom. Jesus. Genius. That's... Making condoms illegal is approximately as smart as making abortion illegal. That that is uh, roughly equivalent in terms of intelligence. So it's like try, okay, it's on the same intellectual level as banning all alcohol. Yes. Prohibition didn't work, guys. Read your fucking history books, people. It didn't. Oh my god! And that was a constitutional amendment, by the way. That yeah. was not just a Supreme Court decision. That was a constitutional fucking amendment. Back when you could get the constitutional amendments passed due to it sounds better than just having a bunch of fucking yuppies who are about to kill over dead anyway, making yeah. the rules and then, oh, I'll get my pet project got done, I'm gonna vacate my seat. I'm gonna go work for a lobbyist firm and make $500,000 a year. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm that... a Supreme Court justice. I got my pet project done that I've been working on for 40 years. Last 40 years, I'm gonna vacate my seat and I'm gonna leave it up to someone else. Have you noticed? Yeah. Go One ahead. second. Go ahead. Have you noticed uh -huh. that after Roe v. Wade yep. wound up getting repealed? Uh, was it one or at least one Supreme Court justice vacated their seat afterwards? Of course they did! Why would you want to be on a body that repealed Roe v. Wade? Why would you want to be on that seat? Because, here's my, here's my thinking of the psychology behind it. Okay. They've been planning this mm -hmm. for about 20 years. Yep. Oh, longer Ruth, than that. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was the one keeping everything in line and keeping things from going to hell. Very likely, yes. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is out of the picture. Yeah, unfortunately. All hell breaks loose. <laughs> yep. No shit. Then, from there, all hell broke loose. And each of the uh, Supreme Court justices had a pet project that they wanted to repeal. Uh -huh. They repeal it, fuck out. Yep. Replace it with someone new. Exactly. We've had 
two Supreme Court justices in the last year or two. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I, I, haven't, been pay, I haven't been paying much attention to it until we the Roe v. Wade We have the replacement for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, of course. We have the replacement yeah. for uh, the one that stepped down. Oh, right. I, I'm going to have to look more into that because uh, I have not been following Supreme Court as closely as I should have. Uh, it is a big deal. And it's a much bigger deal now than it was five years ago. So I need to get back in, uh, yes, back in uh, the details of that. Uh, why don't we go and film a couple of episodes of our podcast on the steps of the Supreme Court building? Let's do it. It's really awesome. Oh, we also drove by a herd of deer. Nice. So, before we get off topic, I want to say something important. Okay. Okay. So, we are talking about. I, I like how we've gone from Kira the Wolf to talking about abortion, but. <laughs> Um, ha- <laughs> Carol the Wolf, uh, yeah, so, uh, nah, Carol the Wolf, we'll take care of him, but abortion, that's what we really should be talking about. Uh, so, abortion rights. How do we get them back? We could, in principle, and again, I am not advocating for this whatsoever, please do not twist my words, this is an example. We could get together a thousand people and go and violently protest at the Supreme Court building. And again, violently being the operative term. We could go and fucking burn shit down and, you know, paint everything with graffiti and whatever. That ain't gonna help. It will do nothing. And in addition, it will hurt the cause if someone does that because now you are the villain. Why would you want to be the villain of the story? Oh, these violent left-wing protesters, how dare they? How dare they protest with violence? I, I, can, I can hear the ghost of Rush Limbaugh saying these words. Yes. Literally, my, my dad used to watch Rush Limbaugh all the time. I can hear his ghost saying these things. Um, guys, stop. Yes. We don't need violence. No. Now, here is what I would do and what I would like to do in real life. Here is what I want to do. Yes. One, talk to the senators, talk to the Congress people, talk to the fucking vice president, talk to the fucking president about this very topic. Send them all a letter. I have, uh, remember, I have the address and the phone number and the email address of every member of Congress. I have this as a file on my computer so we can go to their office in Washington, in Washington, D.C., and we can knock on their door and say, I would like to speak with Senator Sanders, please. Now, they will say no the first couple of times that we ask, but we can talk to one of their staff in person and say, look, this is an important issue and we want to help Senator Sanders to get abortion rights for the country. I know this is something that he wants, so we want to help. Okay? Yes. So step one, get people in power to listen. Step two, non-violent protest. So as an example, who, I ask you, who is trying to get this decision to stay in place. Who got Roe v. Wade overturned? Who specifically? Do you know? No, I do not know. Do you? I do. I know it might surprise you, but I do. Uh, so, <laughs> Stephen, uh, it probably does not come as a surprise to you that this is something that I am very well versed in. So, <clears throat> there are a couple of very powerful Christian organizations, such as Focus on the Family, such as, uh, I think it's called like American Family Council or something like that, some of these shitty organizations that no one has fucking ever heard of, but they should hear about them because they are the ones who are pushing for this to be decided in their favor. Uh, darling, I have a question. Do you think that if we protested in front of the office for Focus on the Family in Washington, D.C. with a thousand people, do you think that might be covered in the press? Yes, it would. Do you think that if we ask those 1,000 people, uh, you know, probably 800 of which have TikTok accounts all stream at the same time, 
800 TikTok streams of the same event at the same time. Do you think that might get covered in the media? Maybe. So, let's use some of Alinsky's principles here. Find a villain and burn them to the ground. Non-violently, of course. So, find a villain. Focus on the family. There they are. There's the villain. Focus on the family. There's the villain. James fucking Dobson, who has been fighting against abortion rights, against the rights for gay and lesbian individuals, against transgender rights, against basically every human decency for the past 50 fucking years. Of course. James Dobson, hey buddy, I would love to protest in front of your office for months because you're going to walk in and out of that office building and you're going to have to face the people that you hurt. You will have to look into their eyes. You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to think about me if you don't want to, but you have to look into my fucking eyes. That is my soapbox for the day.